Around 66 million years ago, the largest snake to ever exist roamed the earth. Deep in the marshy forests of South America, the lord of the jungle, Titanoboa, was every living creature's worst nightmare. This snake was larger than the T-Rex. It was three times larger than the anaconda, which is the biggest snake alive today. And if you're still not shitting your pants, know that it was as big as a five-story building. Now, if by any chance you haven't freaked out yet, Titanoboa had a killing strategy that'll literally give you chills. What if this humongous beast did not go extinct? What on earth did it eat? And how the heck did it get so huge? Stay tuned, cause trust me, you don't want to miss the answers to these. Now roll the clock back to the Paleocene Epoch, around 66 million years ago, and you'll find that once all the dinosaurs had gone extinct, it was this monstrous snake that became the new ruler of land. Titanoboa lurked in the warmest, wettest parts of South America, and humans should feel really lucky they didn't exist back then, cause going fishing in Colombia on a nice sunny Sunday could have resulted in the most tragic, gruesome death ever. But before we talk about how this snake killed you, you need to know its true size and appearance. Titanoboa grew up to 50 feet, or 15 meters in length, and it was around 3 feet, or 1 meter wide. This means the thickest part of its body would be nearly as high as a man's waist. Now, the human body can only handle around 770 pounds, or 350 kilograms, without getting completely crushed. But this snake weighed over 2,000 pounds, or 1,000 kilograms, which means it could completely shatter our bones under its weight. You'll be surprised to hear that Titanoboa is more closely related to present-day boa species, rather than giant-sized anacondas. But most paleontologists believe that this massive serpent behaved more like today's green anacondas. That's because it spent most of its time in water to support its enormous size. It had a muscular, legless body, perfect for squeezing the life out of any creature that came its way. Now these snakes didn't carry venom, but their strong jaws and large mouth cavity helped them dislocate and swallow prey whole, even if the victim's body was larger than the snake's head. Titanoboa also had a forked tongue that aided it in locating prey, even underwater. As for its skin, it was so thick that you could describe it as damn near bulletproof. Its color was either brownish or grayish, and that's perfect, as it camouflaged it well in the muddy rivers of the tropical rainforests where it flourished. But what about when it wasn't underwater? These snakes had fairly small scales and really stretchy skin, which made it easy for them to move around on land. Now, all these adaptations were really important because Titanoboa had to share their habitat with other enormous species, like 13-foot crocodiles and 8-foot turtles. I'll tell you more about this later. These massive snakes lived in the hot, tropical rainforests of South America. But luckily for them, they appeared once all the carnivorous predatory dinosaurs, such as Tyrannosaurus rex, were safely dead. Due to their massive size and weight, these snakes likely spent most of their time in the numerous rivers of their habitat. Similar to large sharks or whales, the water would have provided buoyancy for its heavy body. One shocking fact about Titanoboa is that it may have been able to hold its breath underwater for up to an hour. That said, paleontologists have yet to discover any animal brave enough to challenge a fully grown Titanoboa. But on the other hand, this serpent itself took on anything in its way. The only question is, how did it kill its prey? Just like Megalodon, Titanoboa was a solitary hunter, as its size allowed it to hunt effectively alone. It would only interact with others of its kind during mating season. It used infrasound to hunt, meaning it was attracted to low-frequency noise and vibrations. That made it less likely to attack still or silent prey, but once it did lock onto a target, Titanoboa would go in for the kill, striking and squeezing its prey so tight they couldn't breathe, then swallowing them whole. When dealing with small prey, like humans, Titanoboa could gulp them down quickly without needing to squeeze, but when hunting larger prey of similar size to itself, it would use its immense strength to constrict the prey until it couldn't breathe. And if the Titanoboa ever had to defend itself against a predator, it used its tail like a whip to attack them. Gosh, it'd suck to get hit by one of those. 
now let's talk about what these guys ate. While green anacondas are famous for devouring capybaras, pig-sized rodents that love water, along with smaller relatives of American alligators and huge turtles, Titanoboa liked something bigger. In 2012, a life-size sculpture of Titanoboa was unveiled at New York's Grand Central Station. The sculpture showed Titanoboa munching on a crocodile, giving viewers a sense of its enormous size. It was likely capable of eating a much larger relative of the present-day crocodile, called the Dirosaurid. These guys could grow up to 20 feet in length, which obviously means they were massive. And that's a good thing, because so was Titanoboa. It couldn't live off eating smaller prey alone, because that would require it to hunt a whole lot in order to fill its tummy. So, it went for larger prey that it could swallow and then continue digesting it for months. This meant it likely ate three to four times per year. But of course, crocodiles weren't the only thing on its menu. In fact, among its favorites was fish, probably a kind of lungfish or bony fish, known as osteoglossomorphs, many of which are extinct today. But when it wasn't dining on fish, Titanoboa may have consumed other reptiles, like turtles. And let me tell you, it was more than capable of taking down even a 300-pound kitchen table-sized turtle. Now that you know how overpowering this gigantic snake was, let's talk about how it became so huge. Firstly, back when it existed, the Earth was much warmer, which made it easier for reptiles to get bigger since their bodies rely on the temperature around them. I'll explain how in a minute. Secondly, Titanoboa mainly consumed large water creatures, like fish and crocs, which were plentiful in its habitat. Of course, having no shortage of food, it could easily grow massive in size. Plus, in a world with lots of big meals and not many enemies, being huge gave Titanoboa a leg up in hunting and getting what it needed to survive. And lastly, the warm weather probably helped its body work more efficiently, making it easier to stay big. Now, just so you know, Titanoboa isn't like the snakes we see today. It belonged to an extinct family of snakes called Matsoidae. Now, if you're thinking, why don't we have snakes as big as Titanoboa in today's South American rainforests? The reason lies in the climate of South America around 60 million years ago. It was much hotter than it is now. This matters because creatures like Titanoboa, being cold-blooded, rely on the environment for their body temperature. Unlike warm-blooded animals that regulate their temperature internally, cold-blooded reptiles can only grow to a certain size before their metabolism slows down too much for them to function properly, especially when it comes to eating. In today's equatorial regions, where temperatures are high, we find the largest snakes. They reach their maximum size given the conditions they live in. To create even larger snakes, we'd need to significantly increase temperatures. Titanoboa likely grew to its immense size because temperatures back then could have been up to 10 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than they are now. Now this raises the question, could future global warming lead to larger snakes appearing on Earth? Theoretically, yes, it's possible, but in reality, it's unlikely. That's because creating such large snakes would require suitable habitats, which are disappearing due to human activities, especially in biodiverse tropical regions. Other than that, human interference and the rapid pace of modern global warming compared to the gradual warming of the past make it a lot less likely for snakes like Titanoboa to reappear on our planet. But hey, you should be grateful for that, because imagine the roof of your house fell in one day and this massive snake dropped down. What could you possibly do to escape it? Pretty much nothing. If you're thinking you could outrun this guy because it's so heavy, it probably couldn't move fast. Well, you couldn't be more wrong. While dragging all that meat around couldn't have been easy for this mega snake, it was really freaking fast for something its size, especially underwater. Titanoboa was capable of reaching speeds up to 50 miles per hour, which is a little slower than a cheetah, but it would have been slower on land where it actually had to carry its body weight. Now let's talk about where and how this snake was first discovered. There's a place in the lowland tropics of northern Colombia, about 60 miles from the Caribbean coast, called Carejon. It's one of the world's richest fossil deposits, offering a glimpse into the past when dinosaurs had just disappeared. 60 million years ago, this place was a vast, swampy jungle, much hotter and wetter than today. 
It was full of gigantic plants and animals, including turtles with shells the size of manhole covers, massive crocodile relatives, and lungfish several times larger than those found in the Amazon today. But guess what else lurked in its swampy jungles? Yep, the Titanoboa. And that's exactly where its first fossils were discovered too. In 2009, scientists found the fossils of 28 Titanoboa snakes in the Querejon coal mines in Colombia. They were discovered during an expedition led by Jonathan Block from the University of Florida and Carlos Yaramillo from the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute. The name Titanoboa means Titanic boa and the species name, Kerejonesis, comes from the Kerejan coal mine where the fossils were found. Lastly, one can't help but wonder why this monstrous beast disappeared from the planet. The exact reason for Titanoboa's extinction remains pretty much unknown, but two theories have been proposed. Firstly, climate change likely played a role in their disappearance. As global temperatures decreased, smaller snakes became more favorable, gradually replacing larger reptiles like Titanoboa. The rapid cooling made it challenging for Titanoboa to regulate their metabolic processes. Secondly, habitat change also contributed to their extinction. The reduction of rainforests and the emergence of grasslands altered the environment, leaving Titanoboa without suitable habitats. This left them with only one choice, which was to disappear and make room for smaller snakes to thrive. In the end, it's safe to say that Titanoboa stands as one of the most magnificent creatures to have ever roamed the Earth. This colossal serpent, measuring up to 50 feet in length and weighing over a ton, ruled the tropical rainforests of South America and was for sure the lord of the jungle. Its sheer size and power, combined with its ability to hunt both on land and underwater, made it the undisputed apex predator of its time. Titanoboa's existence really makes you think how incredibly diverse the ancient ecosystems were. And that's a wrap. Do you think Titanoboa could also climb trees in a manner similar to modern snakes? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.